Hello and welcome back to Jill of the Jungle. I mean Arcanum of Steamworks and Magic Obscura. When we last left off, Thanatos. Well, what an impressive attack. probably best to make sure these folks uh, don't hit me quite so hard. And I did spy with my little eye something that looks like stuff. Bullets. Some more cure alls. Anything in here we desperately need? Short answer, no. Yeah, I think that'll be fine. I could probably make another cure-all, but yeah, I've got 11 of them. Okay, that looks like a doorway. How we get to said doorway is real good question. Is this the way I came from? Nope. getting to the uh, point in the game well not so much the point in the game but <clears throat> we have definitely started testing the limitations of this program <laughs> Anything else in these jungles? And yeah, nothing that looks like an exit. But a place that looks like more opposition. Okay. 
Nicely done. Thank you. Exit over there. I'm not sure. That's an exit. That's an exit if I ever done seen one. And the building. Hmm. here. Hello. What do you want of me? I did not choose to live on this island for its ambience. I chose it so I wouldn't have to entertain fools. Leave me be. Calm down. I'm not here to bother you. I'm looking for a grave. That is quite the fool's journey just to find someone's dead body. I'm <clears throat> afraid to ask. But whose grave would you be looking for? Why are you afraid to ask? I'm afraid to ask. Because I know the answer. There is only one reason any fool would risk his life to come here. And that is to search for the great Nasruddin. It doesn't sound like you hold him in high regard. The great Nasruddin is nothing but a thorn in my side all these many years. You seem fairly bitter towards the old chap. What? How dare you, old man? Do you have any idea who you're talking about? Nasruddin was the wisest and most benevolent elf in the history of Arcanum. He saved us all, and that includes you. So I recommend you keep your comments to yourself. Oh? And you think you know about Nasruddin, young man? Who are you to tell me about that old worthless elf? Worthless? Why, I ought to... No, I'm not going to sink to your level, old man. Nazaruddin would have had more patience with men of your kind, and so will I. I don't have to defend him. Oh, of course you don't have to defend him, young man. The old elf was completely incorrigible. There's no defense whatsoever for individuals of such low character as he. You've chosen well not to waste your words on the likes of Nazaruddin. You're testing my patience, old man. Another bad word about Nazruddin, and it might just be the last one you say on both feet. Do we understand one another? Uh, Virgil, perhaps you ought to keep your voice down with our new friend here. Ah, now there's the voice of reason, and from such a beautiful young elf. You know, in my younger days, I knew a girl who looked a lot like you. She had the most wonderful name. Let me see, what was it? I suppose it would translate to something like... The Silver One. Yes. I also know someone like that. She used to tell me about a great man she once knew. She told me that he taught her a great many things. That he was much like her own father. Ah, yes. Make sure to pass on my greetings to your mother. She was such a wonderful child. And it seems she has a wonderful daughter as well. Greetings, Princess Raven. Uh... I will pass on your greetings to her. It will make her very happy to know you are here among us. Greetings, Nazardin. Nazar what? You're Nazardin. I would say in all my glory, but I'm afraid I haven't any left. But you're Nazardin. You saved the world from Aranax. No. I delivered the world to Aranax. I put in place the system that he felt was his for the taking. I even imparted my elven arrogance to him. I must bear full responsibility for his actions. A bit dramatic, don't you think? Aranax's actions were his own. You do not understand. He was my son. I taught him everything. Only to see him be carried away by his youthful temper. I should have seen it. There must have been a way to stop him before it came to... what it did. 
I've heard all the legends. Could you tell me what really happened? It started in the Age of Legends. I was young, headstrong. I thought I could take on the world, and I did. I fought the good fight to protect the lesser races, as I arrogantly called them, from the chaos that raged everywhere. Dragons, demons, evil sorcerers, I fought them all and won. And this all before even the days of the Elven Council. How did the Elven Council come about? I gathered a group of idealistic mages together, and we created an Elven Council for the good of all. We really believed that. For a time, I suppose, it was even true. I really believe things began to change when we discovered a way to banish things from this plane of existence. Why? It was the ultimate weapon. Once something was banished from this plane of existence, it could never return. With ultimate power comes ultimate responsibility and ultimate corruption. We were quick to use it on new and ever more terrible threats. The Bane of Cree, Krakatur, Gorgoth, Kurgan. So how did Aranax fit into all of this? Sometime during all this heroic carnage, my son came of age. I quickly ushered him into the council, amidst some of the others' protest about his young age and inexperience. And then it all came crashing down upon me. Look, are you certain you really want to hear all this self-pitying drivel? Uh, of course. So what did Aranax actually do that was so terrible? He had taken it upon himself to keep the balance, as he termed it. He believed that being a member of the council validated any course of action he chose to pursue. This meant attacking anything he saw as a threat, such as a city that had begun building advanced technological devices. Vendegroth, it was called. He warned them to cease their destructive behavior and destroyed one of their factories to underscore his point. Justifiably afraid for their very lives, they swiftly constructed a device that could destroy even the most powerful wizard. He responded by calling on forces that few of us had ever seen and wiping not just the city, but the whole province of Vendegroth from the face of Arcanum with one blow. Oh, my. He felt himself betrayed when the Council condemned his actions. He showed no remorse. In his arrogance, he was sure he would be vindicated. I cast the deciding vote to banish my own son. If I must die, I will be the last, he screamed as he hurled the spell that brought an end to the Council, the Age of Legends, and my will to live. It was a harsh dawn that morning on the plains of Brodgar, and it was there in the shadow of the Black Spire that our armies met in the most terrible battle that our kingdom has ever seen. <laughs> As the sun set, only four of us were still alive to witness the destruction we had brought to pass. I found Aranax among the corpses of our decimated armies, and it was there that I condemned my own son to the void. only through our combined might that Aranax was subdued, and I watched my own son fall into the horror of the void. But such was the fury and power unleashed by this conflict that the very fabric of reality was torn asunder. With our remaining energy, we were able to seal the rift with powerful wards, and the Ring of Brodgar still stands today as a monument to my son's destructive pride and my own unforgivable failure. Goodness. When I regained consciousness, I was on the shore of Thanatos. I'd regained just enough energy to seal myself in a regenerative shell. I remained that way for a thousand years. 
No one had ever stayed in a shell for anywhere near that amount of time. Somehow, my magical hibernation extended my life much beyond that of even the most powerful elven mages. Why have you hidden yourself here for a thousand years? The world out there is not mine. It only serves to remind me of my failure. Everyone I knew, everything I held dear is gone. I myself should have died long ago. Besides, I do not fancy being worshipped as a god. I know the feeling. The Panori think I'm your reincarnation. I pity you, then. I received a taste of their hero worship from Mannix, and I can tell you I didn't like the taste of it one bit. An interesting point of view, all things considered. Hold on there! Do you two realize exactly what you're talking about here? Perhaps this is an interesting philosophical debate for you two, but we're talking about the foundations of the Panari religion here. Virgil, I don't think now's the time. I mean... You're not dead. That means you're not his reincarnation. Where the bloody hell does that leave the rest of us? Are any of the prophecies true? Have all of us Panari just been running around half-cocked for the last 2,000 years? Easy, young Virgil. I know how all of this must make you feel, and I apologize for making light of your beliefs. Unfortunately, I don't have the answers you're seeking. I mean no disrespect, Nazruddin, but if you don't have any idea as to what's going on here, then you'll forgive me if I'm having a few doubts concerning the validity of my newfound religion. <laughs> Good, Virgil. If there is one thing in life that one must learn, it is to question everything. In the end, I'm sure you will have the answers that you seek. And whether or not this is all the fulfillment of a prophecy or just random chance... Does it change the gravity of our situation? Would you do anything differently if you knew one way or the other? No, I wouldn't. And I will see this until the end, regardless of the reasons behind it. Thank you, Nasruddin. At the very least, your wisdom warrants a religious movement, even if its followers tend to be a bit soft in the head. I'm touched. Listen, Nasruddin. <sighs> I feel as if I've been waiting to hear those words since I awoke those many years ago. I had hoped it would never come to this. Why, Aranax? Why can't you see the folly of the path you've chosen? What are you going to do about this situation? What am I going to do? He's your son. What are you going to do? I fear there is nothing I can do. I am old, tired. I do not believe I could stand up against my son now, even if I could find the heart to try. How is it that he's still so powerful after all this time? We do not know what life in the void is like, if it can be even called life. Who knows what sources of power could be found on the other side? There must be some way to stop him. I can think of only one possible strategy to defeat him now. You must retrieve the Vendegroth device that was meant to destroy him. Vendegroth device? He said Vendegroth was destroyed. And so it was, above ground. There are many catacombs and tunnels lying beneath the surface. Some of the members attempted to retrieve it to use against Aranax, but they never returned. We were forced to battle him without it, and you know the consequence of that. And what does this device do? Extremely powerful mages have the ability to regenerate themselves whenever they are badly hurt, as I did. If one is powerful enough to hurt a master sorcerer gravely, the mage will retreat into his regenerative shell and emerge stronger than ever. The device is the only way known to disrupt the regenerating shield. And disrupting the field kills the mage within? Quite so. The technology of the device is designed to disrupt the field in such a way as to cause the shell to drain the life force instead of regenerating it. Quite gruesome to contemplate, actually. Further, it is said that one who is killed in this manner is forever separated from this world, with no chance of being returned magically or otherwise. Well, how can I find this device? You must search the ruins of Endigroth in the wastes where the city once lay. Where can I find the ruins? The wastes are vast, as you know. I do not know exactly. Those days are long past, and with them a better part of my memory, I'm afraid. All I know is that at one point, Vendegroth and its settlements spread out over that whole area now known as the Wastes. 
There was a bridge leading into the Vendegraaff province. Here. Oh, thanks, but why don't you retrieve the device? I must conserve what little remains of my energy to banish you to the void once you have retrieved the device. The banishment spell is rarely performed by a single mage. Its power requirement is so great. Hold a moment. You're going to banish me? Certainly. If we were to wait for Aranax to breach the wards, I fear the loss of life would be immeasurable. Seems everything's fallen to me, once again. The irony of all this is not lost on myself. One might almost believe the prophecies to be true. It does appear that you are instrumental in halting this cataclysm. If only this were not necessary. I had hoped if Aranax ever returned, he would have realized the error of what he had done. And judging from my encounter with him, I'd say it not. Yes, yes. It is obvious to me that he has committed himself to a path which can only end in his destruction. What do I do once I've retrieved the device? You must meet me at the site of the wards, the Ring of Broadguard, as they are now known. The barrier between the worlds is thin enough there for me to be able to send you across by myself. I would suggest that you bring as much help as you can recruit as it will be no easy task to defeat Aranax. I guess I'll do it, but could you clarify some things before I'm off? What is it that is troubling your thoughts? Are you aware of the Panari? I'm well aware of the whole Panari tomfoolery, yes. When I emerged from my regenerative state, I traveled to the mainland. And I suppose I thought I could somehow live among the world again. After I spoke with that Mannix fellow, I knew I was deluding myself. Did he tell you how the Panari began? He did not know much. Mostly some fanciful notions mixed with bits and pieces of history. As near as I was able to put together from speaking with him, Kryn Urden, the last surviving member of the Council, started the Panari simply to maintain the wards. To periodically strengthen them, as it were. Did you tell Mannix who you were? After I listened to his insane beliefs for what seemed like hours, I hinted that I had actually known Nazrud and was already too far gone. He would not have believed any of my protests or denials of my godhood. He most likely would have interpreted the whole thing as some sort of test, I suppose. Well, they really believe I am your reincarnation. I pity you, then. I received a taste of their hero worship from Mannix, and I can tell... Hold on there! I mean... I mean no. No, I wouldn't. I fear there is nothing I can do. I am old. I can think of it. So it was. Above ground. Extreme white so You must search the ruins of any. I do not know exactly. Ah, and then that pulled right into the. Where is the device? Have you retrieved it? I haven't had the opportunity to retrieve the device. Why are you delaying? It is of the utmost importance that we stop Aranax. Well, you're right there. So, I guess the uh, rumors of Nazdarin's demise are greatly exaggerated. Um, when we come back, uh, I'll probably go through this jungle maze so uh, we don't have to sit through that again. But when we come back... <laughs> Strange things afoot. Have a good one, folks.